All right, hello and welcome to episode 13.5 of my Retro City Rampage clone in Unity tutorial. Basically because uh, there's a couple of bug fixes and improvements uh, that I wanted to make. So, but no new features, so it gets 0.5 instead of an actual number. So yeah, let's get on with it. Uh, first thing I want to show was a suggestion made by someone on Reddit called Handshake of CO. Um, basically, where he talks about uh, using generics, where it's basically it's like a method where you can specify the type. So he suggests uh, said that say we send in a type of the component you want to disable. Uh, so say if you were to say send NPC health with the as the T, and since all most unique scripts uh, inherit from mono behavior here. They all can be just like classed as a mono behavior, so they just have to be a mono behavior basically. There, so say you send NPC health, it'll get the NPC health without having to have its own specific line of code in the uh, script. So you can just have like you could use the same code for NPC health, person movement, and yada yada. You get that, yeah. Uh, so I've implemented that, uh, but I've added a uh, also a uh, parameter for a boolean that just takes a status so basically that'll just say whether you want to enable or disable the component uh yeah so as you can see we've got here we can just say call change npc component person movement true or got a doppelganger here which is basically just false so i've got the disable enable uh one a couple of things you should know uh couldn't do the same thing to the npc weapon controller because it is a child of the uh, uh, a child of the game objects that the Entercar script is on, or whatever, or the empathy want to get on, sorry. And since we're also wanting to enable and disable the weapons sprite renderer, uh, there's not much point really creating a method for that one function. So we're just going to keep it here. And also for things like box collider and there's a train coming. It's really chippy now. Okay. So for things like box collider and sprite renderer, these don't inherit from uh, mono behavior. So they can't be used in this uh, like generic function, ideally. Okay. Uh, next, I also. One uh, bug fix that I wanted to add was a. Uh, it was I didn't add the when the NPC is kicked out of the car, it needs to reset the NPC. Uh, the car to get in to null in the NPC AI script. Uh, basically, what would happen if without this is that it wouldn't after it got out of a car, it wouldn't be able to go back into a car because it still have the car that it wants to get in, as the. Uh, as the one it wants to get in, but if it had been destroyed or whatnot, or the player was in it, then it would be able to get there. So, yeah. So, basically, this sets it, the value of car to get in to null, which I made public as well, which I'll go over in a minute. It sets it to null, so it can find another car with that method we put in the car manager script. Okay. Uh, on the car, also, another change we made to the enter and exit car, enter car, sorry, the enter car script is... I forgot to add uh, is player in car to false and true. So basically, when the player exits a car, these two values are set to false, whereas when they enter the car, it's set to true. This was uh, that's fuck up on my part, so I'm sorry about that. Uh, basically, now that these are in, uh, basically the NPC car AI works properly. So instead of just like randomly trying to run you over, it'll just without end, it will try and uh, it'll make the NPC leave the car when it's near you and attack you on foot. So like the whatever weapon they have at the time. So yeah, uh, that's how to do. Okay. Uh, NPC AI. There we go. Uh, 
All right, basically, uh, we've also added a few try and catch uh, exceptions. Oh, yeah, sorry, getting ahead of myself. First off, we made switched the car to get in from a local variable to a global variable, and we've made it to public so it can be accessed by the enter car script. Uh, yeah, and then basically we check if the car to get in is null, and we're calling this, it will only get the car to get in once, uh, just because I realised if we were repeatedly calling it here, it'd be assigning the car every time, which we don't really need, so kind of pointless. Uh, uh, yeah. And we've also added a try catch statement to handle any, basically it just stops any errors appearing when, if, say, the car to get in isn't a valid target or whatnot. Uh, we've got a couple of those in, but I'll go over there where they are in a minute. And I think that's all the changes I've made. Yep. Uh, there was also one more in this. Uh... Oh yeah, calculate in direction. Basically, there was a bug where if the player, if the NPC, sorry, was wanting to go to a car, but it was still attacking the player, it would like the weapon would face the player, but the NPC would face the direction it wanted to go to the car. So I've changed this basically. So if the NPC is alerted to the player, then its direction will be calculated based on the player's position. Otherwise, its uh, direction is calculated based on the A star path that it gets from the 2D pathfind component on it. So yeah, that was a change. Uh, and we've also added, I think I added this, I added stop no player for if the hit, it just moved here because it worked better. Because uh, you don't want to stop if you're going near a car. So yeah. Uh, and I was not using the player's position. Oh yeah, uh, we just use, I think we I've made a change to the stop no player where it just uses the, if the NPC can detect the player, then it will, stop moving and start shooting basically so we've got a reference to the weapon controller here we've just added that in so here and we've got the transform of the player so these are declared here and yeah so they just get the transform and the weapon controller respectively simple enough uh i think that might be the npc weapon controller actually not the player one uh yeah so We've added another try catch exception to here because this is where the main errors were occurring. Basically, there was if you saw it on the last episode, it would return a null reference. No, was it null reference? Basically, it was saying that the hit ray cast wasn't colliding with anything, so it would just return an error. But uh, we basically got a try. Uh, basically, we've got a try catch exception thingy where if the uh, hit raycast isn't colliding with anything, it'll just return false instead. But if it does hit either the player or if it hits a car and the enter car script with on that object it's collided with has, and the is player in car value is true, so basically that can detect if the player is in a car and the raycast that it's hit has just hit the car that the player's in, then that is true, basically. Uh, yeah, so that's, that basically makes it slightly more advanced, so it won't just randomly shoot at a car, uh, like I put it to last time. So see, if I go behind the car, it doesn't shoot me, don't shoot me, don't shoot me, don't shoot me. Well, okay, I thought it wouldn't shoot me, but whatever. That, see? Don't shoot properly. And if I get in the car, he'll try and get in the car, but still face me. And if I leave the car now, and he's near me, he will get out of the car and try and shoot me rather than run me over. That's nice. And so that was that. Uh, what else? Also, I made can NPC. This was also made public. Uh, just so I think it was in the. NPC AI that I used it. Uh, I believe it was yeah. 
We just use it in the snap near player just to make sure we can detect them. Uh, there's also another one on the uh, another catch try catch exception on the uh, set new target because that was a place where errors were occurring. Basically, if they couldn't set the basically couldn't get a tar uh, after the target or something. So yeah, there's another miscuse catches errors that occur here because sometimes that happens. I know I'm doing badly explaining that, but it stops the errors and it works all right. So yeah, uh, exception catches. And finally, we've got the change to the ram car method. If I can find the car AI. So yeah, basically we've added, uh, changed it. So it's this one. So if ram time is more than zero and Yeah. So basically, if the RAM time is more than zero, that shouldn't be there. So I'll just comment that out. If the RAM time is more than zero and it's trying to RAM, then it'll just count the timer down. And if the pathfinder speed is more than five, then if the so if the distance between the player and the car that the enemy NPC is in is more than five, then the speed will be five. But if it's less than five, then it will be 16 because speeding up, ramming, and all that. So, yeah, I think that's all the stuff I wanted to cover. Uh, yeah, okay. Sorry about having to fix all those bugs, but better to do it now, I guess, than leave them. And thank you again to Handshake of CO for the advice. And I know my methods aren't particularly named very well, but at this point, it probably wouldn't be good to change them, uh, to change them because it would confuse anyone that's following along. I may do it when I release the asset packs just to make it more helpful, or I might just comment them to describe what they do. But whatever. It's okay. Cheers for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. Go play Hotline Miami. No, I do go play Hotline Miami, but by the asset pack to make a clone of Hotline Miami and play loud or quiet. Because I'm just a horrible bundle of originality, aren't I? Bye!